Creating an entire discipline would be an astonishing feat for any academic. Dr. David Mark did it twice, helping to create the fields of geographic information science and cognitive geography. Considering he's pioneered new topographic imaging methods for computers and developed principles of vehicle navigation even before GPS, it's especially surprising that geography wasn't Dr. Mark's first passion. In fact, it was his now lifelong fascination for birds as a teen that initially led him to SFU in 1965 with hopes of getting a degree in biology. But it wasn't until he found he wasn't interested in biology lab work that he discovered his true calling, geography. Consistently named one of the most productive, creative, and integrative academics in his field, Dr. Mark's record is so prolific, it's hard to know where to start. He's an icon. His research projects have led to more than 225 publications cited over 10,000 times. He's also received 28 grants totaling around $17 million US. He's heavily involved with multiple consortiums, founding member of two of the most influential conference series in the academic GI Sci community, played a critical role building the National Center for Geographic Information and Analysis, and involved as a project director for two NSF-funded integrative graduate education research traineeship projects, which supported 37 completed doctorates in seven different academic departments. He's received multiple honors, including Researcher of the Year, Educator of the Year, and promoted to the rank of Distinguished Professor at State University of New York, just to name a few. As if creating two groundbreaking disciplines isn't enough, he's well on his way to creating a third, Ethnophysiography, linking language and culture to people's native conceptualizations of the physical landscape. Even after a lifetime of dedication to his work, there's still much more to come from Dr. David Mark. And now please join me in welcoming Dr. David Mark. Thank you. Good evening. Well, Zabin uh, stole my line and then deepened it by, uh, I was going to say how humbled I am to be on the same stage with these other recipients. And it's um, a great um, to be here. Um, my, the theme w w was suggested, if not you, who, if not now, when. And I did not really see that as the way my career and life had gone. My life and career and my success are not a consequence of goals and steady progress toward them, but rather um, historical contingency and uh, bifurcation points. So I was presented, as we all are presented with many, many opportunities, and some people just know which way to go and which choice to make, and uh, I kind of, I think, drifted along but uh, chance favors the prepared mind, and I um, made a number of uh, good choices and uh, good progress. Uh, my earliest childhood memories are um, collecting big jars of palm, pond water and looking at the tadpoles develop and uh, beetles and so on. So I think I was a naturalist at heart, and I suppose I still am. Uh, what I wanted to do when I grew up was uh, discover and describe and name s new species of insects. And at an age when I was probably 10 or 12, I got a tour of uh, Professor Spencer's insect collection at UBC. And that was um, a, a really something that changed my uh, interest. And my parents were very supportive, so this, the idea of uh, support from family and colleagues and professors is another theme that I want to present here. And uh, things changed again. On a winter day during the Christmas holidays when I was 15 years old, a flock of beautiful birds landed in my backyard, my parents' backyard, um, and started drinking at, in a fish pond. And they were not in my book. So I had a bird book of, of 100 birds, and they weren't in there. 
So I had to go to the library and get a better book, and they were Evening Grosbeaks. This is the one here, and that really changed my interest again, away from insects. Uh, how many different kinds of birds could I find? And so, um, 3,395 kinds of birds later, I'm still <laughs> very interested in birds. So I switched my career goal to becoming an ornithologist. I was going to do a biology degree and then go to Cornell to get a doctorate in ornithology. Um, why did I choose um, Simon Fraser? Uh, this is another picture with the quadrangle having only three sides, which we heard a little about, a bit about uh, then. Um, some of the staff of the Alumni Association in helping me prepare here thought it was a bold choice, and, and the president said that earlier. And uh, for me, it was not a bold choice of new over established. It was not a leap of faith. Sorry to say it was because I was living in Burnaby, and this was... <laughs> so, uh, my, with one exception, my entire graduating class from high school came to Simon Fraser, be because we got a bus directly up the hill. So the, it, it turned out to have been a very good choice, and I did return to do my doctorate. Um, another thing that may surprise you is uh, I did not realize that um, university-based researchers were also teachers, and I never particularly wanted to be a teacher. Um, but I've been involved in education for a long time now, mainly in the area of uh, individual mentoring of program development, and on the interdisciplinary theme, I did develop a, a doctoral program that funded a large number of PhD students in seven academic departments. So I've been a successful educator, perhaps not so much a teacher. How did I get into geography? My, my time is already starting to run out here, but as a first semester biology major, I. Um, went to um, the advisor in biology to find out what art selective I should take. And I thought I would take French or had some other ideas, and he said take geography. It actually subverted the general education because physical geography is a science, so I got one more science, which is what I wanted to do. Um, and um, after a while, I became fed up with biology. I dropped out for a year. A friend and I wrote songs and <laughs> tried to sell them to local uh, rock bands uh, unsuccessfully. And I also sold cameras in Woodward's uh, department <laughs> store. Um, but I realized I would probably need a university degree to have a um, successful uh, career or life. I was still fed up with lab sciences, so I had two t choices that I already had credits in, uh, geography and mathematics. So I took Three geographies, two mathematics. Uh, I was given failing grades in two of the geographies. Um, I, it turns out I did not invite those professors here tonight. <laughs> Al although, uh, although they're nice fellows and so on. Um, Tom Poiker, who is here tonight, um, wrote on my term paper for a big proportion of the grade, this is either an A plus or an F, depending on, depending on whether you've copied it from somewhere. <laughs> Come and see me. So I went to his office and told him it was tr the truth that it was my own original work, and he gave me an A in the course, which gave me a 1.75 grade point average. <laughs> And I only had probation rather than uh, suspension. <laughs> so that was a cert certainly an important point. I'll, uh, I'll have to skip a few, um, well, maybe not. Um, <laughs> my academic career has skipped around to a bunch of topics. And uh, I think it's been very successful. You heard about how my work has been published and cited. Um, but my current research is, since 2002 has been the most rewarding. I think it integrates my research interests from many of the themes going all the way back to undergraduate days, that I've been working with some indigenous or First Nations groups in Australia and in um, 
Arizona or New Mexico more, and trying to understand how they conceptualize the, the landscape, the physical environment, particularly at larger scales. What are the terms they have for what parts of the environment, and how can that potentially be represented in information systems, geographic information, that largely otherwise is a white male North Atlantic sort of worldview. And uh, I've had some great experiences with that. So I, I'll, um, I, I need to thank uh, many people in my life, my career. I'd like to particularly thank um, my uh, nominators who prepared the, the nomination for this award, Tom Poiker and Barbara Diggins, because um, I gave them some good material to work with, but it still uh, <laughs> takes a, um, a really uh, an effort to uh, make it a convincing case. So I'll end with, um, well, chance favors the prepared mind, again, is important, but um, I'm not sure where I am. There's field work, and uh, I lost track of, of my slides. Um, ending with uh, two great American philosophers, one of whom is known as a poet and the other is a baseball player. Um, Robert Frost said, uh, two roads diverged in a wood and I, I took the, le the one less traveled and that has made all the difference. And um, Yogi Berra said, uh, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, thank you.